JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 9th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest and then we will, we will uh, jump uh, into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued underperforming uh, most of the other major currencies on Wednesday during the Asian session Thursday. It gained only versus uh, it gained only versus GBP, CAD, and um, JPY in that order, while it lost ground versus Aussie, Kiwi, the Euro, and the Swiss franc. Now, the relative weakness of the US dollar and the Japanese yen, combined with the strengthening of the risk linked Aussie and Kiwi, suggests that investors maintained the risk on uh, mood yesterday and today. However, the weakening of uh, the pound and the loonie, as well as the relative strength of the franc, point otherwise. Thus, in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here we see that uh, major European indices traded in negative waters, but sentiment improved during the US session with all three of Wall Street's uh, indices closing in the green. The improved appetite rolled over into the Asian session today as well. The only index of those under our radar which slid was Japan's Nikkei 225. Now, European investors may have turned cautious yesterday after UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson announced uh, tougher COVID-related restrictions, ordering people to work from home, wear masks in uh, public places and use vaccine uh, passes. This may have been the catalyst behind the pound's slide as well. However, the market impact stayed limited to European assets. During the US session, we, we saw sentiment, um, sentiment improving with investors uh, perhaps still cheering reassuring headlines surrounding the Omicron coronavirus variant. Remember that studies have shown that the symptoms of uh, the new strain are mild and that a third dose of the, of the Pfizer vaccine can neutralize it. Overall, we maintain the view that the risk appetite could stay supported for a while more. However, we repeat for the upteenth time that we are reluctant to call for a long-lasting recovery. Any headlines pointing to more severe symptoms of uh, the Omicron variant or more restrictions around the globe that could hamper economic activity are likely to result in stress and anxiety and thereby another round of uh, risk aversion. Now, besides news surrounding the coronavirus, we also had a Bank of Canada monetary policy decision yesterday with the bank keeping interest rates untouched at 0.25%. In the statement accompanying the decision, though, the language was more cautious than previously, with officials expressing concerns over uh, the economic impact of the new coronavirus variant. They acknowledged that... Um, the new strain has injected renewed uncertainty and that this uncertainty could weigh on uh, growth by compounding supply chain disruptions and reducing uh, demand for uh, some services. With uh, Canadian dollar traders perhaps anticipating a rate hike in coming months, such wording may have come as a disappointment as it means that uh, Canadian policymakers are not in a rush to push the hike but. That's why, despite being, risk linked, despite being a risk in currency, the Canadian dollar slid at the time of the release. It could feel the heat of the decision for a while more, but we expect its traders to soon turn their gaze to developments surrounding the broader market sentiment. More optimistic headlines could keep the loony, the loony slide uh, short-lived and result in a rebound soon. After all, we saw a similar pattern in the Aussie. Despite the RBA being among the central banks that do not want to touch uh, rates in 2022, the Aussie has been the best performer among the major, um, among the major currencies uh, now in the midst of uh, the latest optimism. 
Now as for today's events, the only noteworthy release is the US initial droplets claims for uh, last week and expectations are for a small decline to 215k from, two from 222k. As for tomorrow, during the early European session, the UK releases its uh, monthly GDP for October alongside the industrial manufacturing production rates for the month. There is no forecast for the monthly GDP rate, but the year-over-year -year rate is anticipated to have jumped to 22.2% from 6.6%. Industrial production is anticipated to have rebounded 0.2% month-over-month month after sliding 0.4%. While the manufacturing production rate is forecast to have held steady at 0.1% month over month. Now, lately, due to fresh coronavirus related worries, bets around the December hike by the Bank of England have declined, with most market participants now believing that officials may prefer to wait and act after the turn of the year. This, combined with the pound's strengthening correlation with risk sentiment, have brought the currency under selling interest. Now, although this uh, data is expected to come in on the bright uh, side, we don't expect it to alter expectations around the Bank of England's actions. Investors are already worried that um, newly imposed restrictions could weigh on economic activity moving forward. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.